kindness is in short supply these days, writes kindness expert and author of A Year of Living Kindly, Donna Cameron. She says it's evident on our highways, in crowded public spaces, in our political discourse, and in social and commercial media. In place of everyday courtesy, we encounter glaring contempt. Gracious acknowledgement has given way to disregard, and where polite conversation or civil debate once reigned, we are blitzed by name-calling, insults, and derision. Out-shouting the other guy has become the strategy of the day, and it doesn't feel good, and it doesn't feel right. May I hear an amen to that? Amen. How many of you have experienced that discomfort around negative, this negative societal climate these days? I think that's pretty much all of us. It seems like there's always someone ready to be derisive or explode on social media or in parking lots, on airplanes, at schools, in government and other public venues, not to mention the horrific pandemic of people unleashing their anger by shooting other people. People are becoming more reactive and screaming at each other, blatantly lying and harming those who disagree. And much of our culture seems to promote competition over cooperation and violence over peace. It's become a dog-eat-dog -dog world where, for survival, many are out for themselves alone before considering others' well-being. And unfortunately, incivility, rudeness, bullying, and cruelty multiply when that's what we see around us and especially when it's modeled by leaders and on social media. But if we check in with ourselves, this feels bad and lonely, doesn't it? And all the unkindness and harshness around us is destructive to our health, our relationships, our well-being and our careers. It has our nervous systems on constant high alert and on the sense of fight and flight. And although some may view kindness as weakness, it's actually been shown, been proven scientifically to improve our health, extend longevity, strengthen our relationships, and contribute to overall happiness. Being able to express kindness is a strength even a superpower, I think, that can help transform lives and change the world for the better. My friends, think of how you feel when you hear or witness a story of kindness. And there's so many beautiful acts of kindness that happen every day, all around. We just need to focus on them. Like the one about a 13-year-old girl in Louisville, Kentucky, who saw a young boy being teased and bullied by other boys over his tattered shoes. And she went home and grabbed a pair of brand new Nikes from her closet and gave them to him. Simple kindness. And then there's the one about police officers in Manchester, England, who responded to a call for help from a 95-year-old woman. And fearing that she or her husband had fallen or injured themselves, they rushed there, only to find that Doris and Fred were lonely. And the officers, in true English fashion, put the kettle on and sat down to visit with the elderly couple over tea. That's what many English police officers do. Sometimes all it takes is giving a few extra moments to consider what might transform someone's day for the better. And the rewards are tremendous. Kindness to others doesn't only help others, it's actually good for us as we do acts of kindness in a myriad of ways. A 2014 scientific study reported numerous positive side effects of kindness. And what a joy to have good side effects, right? Kindness boosts our immune system by increasing the production of serotonin and oxytocin, the feel-good hormones, which also makes us happier. 
and the recipient gets similar benefits. Even someone observing an act of kindness can reap those advantages. Now, Scottish scientist Dr. David Hamilton reports it also helps the heart, it dilates blood vessels, and reduces blood pressure. So here, who, who here would like to try it just for the health benefits alone? <laughs> kindness increases dopamine in the brain to make us happier. It slows aging. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and controls inflammation levels in the body, and it rewires our brains when we practice it regularly. Of course, kindness also improves relationship. And best of all, it's contagious in a good way. Dr. Hamilton tells the story of a person who donated a kidney to a stranger. And this act of selflessness and generosity ended up inspiring other friends of theirs and family members to donate their kidneys as well. So 10 more people received kidneys and lives were saved as a result of this one inspirational act. So witnessing in, engaging, or receiving kindness is a catalyst for more kindness. I actually think it's one of the reasons so many of us are at Chalice, right? Because even if we're not personally involved in some of the many kind things we do in this congregation, like feeding the homeless, supporting field worker families, or advocating, advocating for racial justice and LGBTQ plus equality, just being in the presence of others who are kind, generous, and compassionate motivates and encourages us, doesn't it? Who here has been inspired by someone at Chalice doing an act of kindness? Yes. I know I'm inspired by so many of you on a daily basis. I really feel like I'm a better human being just by being involved with you all. And we're so blessed to have a board president and other leaders and a dedicated staff team, all of whom lead with kindness. That's where they come from. Further research is also showing that if healthcare practitioners are kind and empathic, it has a measurable effect on patients' health and healing. So look for kind doctors when you go through medical procedures. In fact, kind doctors have better outcomes with their patients. So in addition to good medical practice, kindness may actually be the best medicine of all. So take that back to your colleagues, doctors, in our midst. Kindness also apparently helps alleviate social anxiety. And I know that some of you have been feeling social anxiety after COVID and being alone and isolated and having feelings of self-consciousness and fear of being negatively judged in groups. But here's the good news. By engaging in acts of kindness, People actually have a greater purpose in social interactions and can experience positive reactions from others. And then this, in turn, boosts your self-confidence and increases the ability to be around others. Plus, we put less attention on our worries. So if you've been fearful of coming back in person because it's a little uncomfortable to be around people, I invite you to come with the intention of bringing kindness to someone. As we come out of our isolated COVID days, one of the ways to reintegrate back into society might be to actively perform random acts of kindness. Or even look for those who might be uncomfortable in social situations and purposely seek to engage them in a gentle way to help them feel more comfortable. It's kind of magic because when we choose to help others in areas that we struggle in ourselves, it often helps us overcome our own difficulties. So I invite you to challenge yourself in that way. Buddhist teacher Ruth King, author of Mindful of Race, writes, kindness is the water of humanity. Without water, we harden. Kindness is an attitude, an aspiration, and a practice. It is also core to spiritual life and religions. Yesterday, as you heard earlier, we held a one-day meditation retreat focusing on compassion and loving kindness. And I'm hoping that the 21 participants went away feeling supported in their ability to be kinder. 
And the practice of metta, which is the loving kindness meditation foundational to Buddhist practice, is something that we can all practice. In fact, the Dalai Lama said, my religion is kindness. And of course, many other religions emphasize kindness. One of the five pillars of Islam is to practice acts of charity and kindness or zakat. And Jesus too taught and modeled numerous acts of kindness and compassion and repeatedly showed his followers to be kind and forgiving. And Confucianism says there is one phrase which sums up the basis of all good conduct, loving kindness. And of course there's the golden rule which is shared by all religions and calls us to do unto others what you would have them do unto you. In a new book called Turn This World Inside Out, author Nora Samarin shares the importance of growing nurturance culture. Now what is nurturance culture? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because I think it actually holds a key to what may transform our society for the better. Nora wrote an essay that went viral called, Rape Culture is the Opposite of Nurturance Culture. So as opposed to violent, dehumanizing, oppressive culture, nurturance culture means holding the circle of humanity with care, nurturing one another, drawing out each other's gifts and protecting one another from harm so we can all be our best beautiful selves. Amen. And rather than thinking of nurturance as something soft that only mothers do, it could be the primary way of being with one another. Wouldn't that make our world a better place? Yes. Nurturance culture invites a tremendous strength of heart and mind that honors all other beings. Sounds a lot like our first Unitarian Universalist principle of honoring people's inherent worth and dignity, doesn't it? Nora Samarin offers an example of a public school in Canada called Windsor House, in which the kids agree to a covenant of how to be together and handle harm, just like we do here in this fellowship. The students expect certain basic relational capacities from each other. Don't bully, don't gossip, ex don't exclude peers in group activities or harm or violate one another in any way, regardless of whether they are close or even like one another. And if someone hurts another verbally, emotionally or physically, the person harming is required to go before a justice council of their peers with the harmed person. And if they don't show up, the council goes to them. But here's the important thing. Students aren't punished. Because punishment disconnects empathy and focuses on getting caught and shaming rather than learning. Instead, they listen to all parties. And then the circle expects whoever caused the harm to mend it in a way that helps meet the needs of the person who was harmed. And the kids use this system often to solve difficulties since they know they will receive care and protection and be heard. It's a restorative justice system that emphasizes kindness and repair rather than authoritarianism and punishment. And as a result, kids exhibit greater care for their community and people's fundamental humanity and worth are taken seriously. Can you imagine living in a culture like that where no one would dehumanize another? And if harm ha happened, we would find a gentle, kind way to reconnect? Can you imagine? Wouldn't that be heaven on earth? We are wired to connect as humans, not to mention being interdependent with our earth and creatures all around us. 
Working to remember that interconnection not only aligns with our seventh UU principle, but it can transform our world into a kinder, more humane and nurturing place. So it's clear that kindness is important, isn't it? But of course, there are many barriers to kindness. It's not that easy, is it? Obstacles like fear, resentment, effort, judgment, righteousness, or simply being around too many unkind people. So how do we realistically change our habits to create this shift in our own lives, in this community, and even in our wider society? How do we open ourselves to being kinder and finding more kindness in a cruel world? Well, guess what? What do you think I'm going to say? What is that? Practice. Because like anything we want to get better at, it takes practice and intention. So I'm going to offer us a few strategies that we can try and incorporate into our lives. One strategy is the pause. If you catch yourself being, feeling reactive or triggered, the best thing to do in that moment is to take a breath and pause. And in that pause, we have a chance to choose what we want to say or do next. As Donna Cameron says, a pause may give way to understanding. It may silence hurtful words. It may avert a broken heart. <coughs> Pauses are powerful medicines. I'm reminded again of the famous quote I've shared with you before by the Holocaust survivor and philosopher Viktor Frankl, because I think it's a profound spiritual undertaking. It's what helped him survive a concentration camp. He said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So I invite you to pause when you can. Another strategy is to increase another strategy to increase kindness is to observe and reduce our propensity to judge. Now who here ever has any judgmental thoughts? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone. Our thoughts even if not expressed out loud can be very damaging to our own well-being and that of others. So see if you can catch yourself next time when you're judging someone and observe how that judgment makes you feel. Check in with yourself to see if your judgments are kind or are they harsh? Do they feel good inside? And if not, you might wish to ask those thoughts, because they're just thoughts, right, to move on and purposely shift your attention into another direction. Just like we redirect a child to a more positive behavior for misbehaving, we can choose to redirect our minds to more positive thoughts. They're kind of like children gone wild sometimes. So remember this other famous quote, be kind. Everyone you meet is carrying a heavy burden. Thirdly, it often takes courage to be kind. It's easier to stand by and watch injustices and cruelty happen, especially if they don't affect us. It takes courage to face a bully or speak up for what's right. It takes courage to offer help when you just don't know quite what to do or to listen to someone without judging. So being part of a community such as this helps us find courage and gives us collective strength to bring more kindness to a cruel world. We can learn to muster the courage to be kind right here from one another. When I first moved to the US to go to college, I was struck by how kind many adults were. Now this was a few years ago, a lot of years ago. But I noticed there were so many people volunteering for charities, adoring their kids, taking care of each other very proactively, and trying to better the world. And coming from England, I was actually struck 
by how kind many Americans were. Then, of course, we know that these days a different tone seems to have taken over, emphasizing power and righteousness. So we have special buttons for those of you here today that say, make America kind again. And if one of the people wearing the buttons already from our meditation class wants to just stand up and, and show it, Del, would you mind just standing up and just giving a little twirl? Make America kind again. And I invite you to wear these buttons out in public with pride and allow them to stimulate conversation. What a perfect way to talk about our loving fellowship, right? This is the place where we practice kindness. And you might wish to share tactics that you are trying out to be kinder. Now, it may take courage to wear those buttons, but what better thing to stand for than kindness? And another strategy is to check in with yourself before emailing, texting, tweeting, or saying something unkind. It's so easy to type and hit send and not be mindful of what you're putting out there. I make a practice of never sending something that I have any doubts about in my gut. In fact, members of the Rotary Club, the service organization focused on human rights around the world, have a four-question discipline that they ask themselves to decide whether and how to act or speak. They ask themselves, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and friendship? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? And if the answer is no to any of those questions, they remain silent. Imagine. The kind of world we could build if we all asked ourselves before we speak and write, is this beneficial to all concerned? And though it may feel important to be right, I know we all like to be right, remember this quote, if you have to choose between being kind and being right, choose being kind and you will always be right. So if you have any doubt whether what you're about to say or write or do is unkind, pause and reconsider. Donna Cameron invites us to keep our eyes on the real prize, peace of mind, happiness, and the joy that comes with kindness. So in our effort to make America kind again, and in tribute to our video earlier, we want to offer you the opportunity to think of something you've done recently that's been kind, or something that you'd like to do. And for those here in person, you'll see some sticky heart notes taped on the chair in front of you, or on your chair, those yellow hearts. And we invite you, at the end of the service, to take a moment to fill in at least one kind thing that you've done recently or that you would like to do inspired by today. And then on your way out, we have a bulletin board there that says kindness. And we invite you, like those kids at the school on the video, to post your act of kindness on that board. And once they're all there, we're going to take them into our social hall so that we can review them and see and be inspired by everybody's acts of kindness. And those of you online, we don't want you to feel left out. You can write your acts of kindness in the chat. And Ani here will type them on stickies for you, and we'll write them on stickies and post them on our board, and then you'll be able to participate in this exercise again. And on your way out, if you're here, I invite those of you in person to take one of our Make America Kind Again buttons. And I hope we have enough. I wasn't quite expecting this many people today, and it's a great joy. If you didn't get one, let our wonderful administrator, Anna, know, admin at chaliceuu.org. We're going to order some more so that everyone can have one. My friends, start noticing the kindness around you. Practice pausing, choosing courage, letting go of judgments, and reflecting on whether what you do Plan to say or do uplifts rather than harms. 
And I invite you to try to do more kind things every day. Because when we all multiply our kindness, we will do our part in making America kind again. As the writer Henry James said, three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. <laughs> and the third is to be kind. May it be so.